Welcome to A Healthy Curiosity, the podcast that explores what it takes to be well in a busy world. With self-care strategies from Chinese medicine, functional medicine, Ayurveda, neuroscience, and beyond. I'm your host, Brody Welch, a licensed acupuncturist and transformation catalyst, here to support you on your journey of health, happiness, and personal evolution. Welcome to today's show. I'm your host, Brody Welch, and today's episode is for you if you are looking for a different approach to emotional wellness and well being. We're going to be talking, going straight to the heart of the matter, talking about the heart and heart energy. My guest today is Corinne Kamara, who's an intuitive guide, acupuncturist, energy medicine practitioner, and the host of the Infinite Love podcast. Her mission is to help people heal, and her offerings are a unique blend of intuitive and energetic healing, practical science, and care. She's devoted her life to the study of physical, emotional, and spiritual wellness, and for the past 20 years has immersed herself in the healing sciences. She began with plant-based nutrition to heal her own physical issues and then obtained her master's in Chinese medicine. Her practice and knowledge continued to expand in her training in energy medicine, and she currently works with spiritual coaches, teachers, and more. For those who are suffering from chronic illness, highly sensitive, and or are looking for support in their lives, Corinne has a wealth of knowledge to guide you back to wellness. She has an online practice and a holistic clinic in Lafayette, where she serves the San Francisco Bay Area community. Corinne, welcome to A Healthy Curiosity. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love talking to fellow Chinese medicine practitioners, especially people who have taken in an interesting direction. It's like, obviously, it's <laughs> a, I get really excited about the overlap between Chinese medicine and other forms of healing. And I think that just so many different frameworks that we can bring to the table, each one offers something a little bit different, different ways of helping. I'm curious about what draws you to the energy of the heart and what got you to be doing the work that you're doing now? Well, the heart energy is the ultimate energy. Like the love, en- the love frequency is the highest level of healing frequency that there is. And so when I started the path of acupuncture and energy medicine in school, we learned that the heart is the shen. So it's like the the spirit of the body lives in the heart and all the emotions get digested in the heart and get distributed to different parts of the body, depending on the person and what's going on in their lives. And that always kind of fascinated me that the heart is almost like the queen of your being in terms of how you take care of yourself. And so the heart energy has always been something fascinating to me. And I also love the resonance that heart energy creates. There's a great website on that called Heart Math, and they talk about heart resonance. So by me shifting my breathing and changing my heart, the way the bioelectric field moves out to others, then that will also affect the room, it affects my clients, it affects people around you. So there's this magnetism and power with the heart energy that I've always found fascinating and utilizing that in my clinic and my clients and my life has just been transformative. Absolutely. I love that you brought up the fact that in Chinese medicine, the heart has this really central importance as housing the Shen, the consciousness, and the Shen also, it's also responsible for integrating the spirits that are considered to be housed in the other organs. And so when I right. think about that, really, it's it's like the conductor of our inner orchestra, like knit, stitching together the different aspects of our life experience. And that in Chinese medicine, there, there's something that we translate as the heart mind. Like the, that's that's like one of the one of the ways that Shen can be can be construed as the the emotional center, but also this that which makes a coherent lens for us to look out of. And that and that the ancient Chinese practitioners who came up with Chinese medicine, the founders of of this medicine, were really tuned into just this other aspect from a biomedical perspective, this measurable electromagnetic biofield that the heart is at the center of. I'd love for you to to say more about 
what you mean by highest frequency in the body. And then I'd like to to give people a sense of where this energy field goes, like what what are its what are its parameters and what kind of energy is it carrying? So the heart energy, so the heart is love, essentially. And pretty much this is like, at least in my belief, like love is the highest, the highest form of energy that there is. And so when we think about different types of energy, it's between love, which is the heart, and then fear, which is the kidneys. So it's also like, if you think about the balance of yin and yang, there's in this planet, good and evil, there's always this like contrast. And so the heart being the queen of love, essentially, love can be used as a state of being, like being in the state of love. It could be in a, an act of love. This love is like an, a noun and a verb, essentially. But in terms of a state, in terms of healing, the frequency of love could be utilized in any way. So we have the auras, we have our chakras, we have our meridi- acupuncture meridians. So any kind of energetic field that exists within our body, we can actually utilize love as a form of self-healing. And also practitioners, there's also practitioners that use love, channel love, and there's, there's a whole school of people that use it as well. But honestly, it's like, you know, people go to practitioners like you and I, mostly because they love us, you know, they love being around our energy. So it's, it's not even something that I mean, you can consciously use love to make it more powerful and potent, but your state of being is a being of love, which is why people have friends and family and they connect with other people. It's the glue that keeps us human. We connect to people because we love them. And there's a certain energy that we get when we're around them and that we like to give them a certain level of energy. It's an exchange. And so in terms of healing, you know, it's pretty much a lot of its intention is focusing on your own love that you have for others or the love you have for yourself, the love that you have for God or whatever it is that you can think about in a very concrete way and amplifying that through your being. So you can use visualization, you can use intention, anything that kind of puts you in that state of love frequency within yourself. And I think most people can can relate to how they feel when they think about their pets or their family or their children there's somebody or something in everyone's life that creates that that feeling overwhelming like oh my god i love them so much and it's and it's really just taking that feeling and amplifying it that is such a powerful state of healing uh, unto itself and and it's true i think that we that what you said about just our our patients coming to us because they love us and because they get that we love them right that right. we we are trying to when when we're dropping into compassion or a state of of healing, we want the best for someone. We want to lift them up to the highest vibration possible within themselves. We want to remove any barriers that they have to their own ability to to recognize that they're part of all that is and that they're part of this of this energetic flow of connection. So I, I really, I, I agree with you that that really this is you know, even even in the Chinese classics, it's said you know that there's that the heart can vaporize phlegm. <laughs> this idea that like <laughs> phlegm is that the turbid yeah. stuff that gets in the way of us see- seeing clearly our, our 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 accurate perception, and that and we can you know transform it. We can get rid of it, and all these like different organs have different strategies for getting through it. But just the heart is just about perception. It's a you know right. that when we're acting like from from that space, that which blocks our vision just just moves away. Well, I, just going back on the phlegm, like I just learned recently a few months ago that phlegm, could all, like unsubstantial phlegm, could also be, this is like the phlegm that not necessarily like phlegm like that's coming out of your mouth, but the phlegm that's like in your body is could also be due to trauma. So when people oh, yeah, have a traumatic experience in their life, they hold on to that energy and then it congeals and turns into perhaps mucus, like you know, a woman getting raped and turning into, and she has endometriosis later on in life. Like endometriosis is mostly a damp condition. And so I just thought that was fascinating because when you said that, I was like, oh, that totally makes sense because you would need the heart energy, like the love and the compassion and the joy and everything to to then soften that pain. Yeah. And really anything, any trauma, uh, trauma, if we want to define it as something that we just haven't been able to get over, something Mm -hmm. that we weren't capable of handling at the time. And so 
the strategy by the body is to store that energy somewhere unobtrusive, right? Put it in a closet, put it somewhere where it's right. not going to harm your everyday survival to allow us to continue on life as, as we're relatively undisturbed by it. So a lot of times it, it can, it can lead to, well, just this carrying things around literally that, that we, that we don't have use for until we have time to unpack it feel what needs to be felt, process it in a way where it integrates into our life in a way that it's no longer holding us back. And that's, I, I think, where we get, I think that's what emotional healing is, is, is right. being able to, to reintegrate our life experiences in a way that serves us better. Right. Absolutely. I love the, also that you've feminized the heart energy as the queen, as opposed to the emperor, which is often yeah. the translation we get in Chinese medicine. But this notion of central importance, right, of, of something that is that is really the the one in charge, <laughs> the one that uh, mm -hmm. that is that deserves to be respected at mm -hmm. all costs. I'm also uh, sort of as we're drawing parallels to other forms of healing and other uh, other ways of construing heart energy, I, I feel like we need to bring oxytocin into this conversation, oh, yeah. right? That, totally. that, so, so I'm wondering, like, so people are probably think of oxytocin as the bonding hormone, right? That which is mm -hmm. that which is released with uh, when mothers are nursing their babies, and when when we are looking into the eyes of a lover, when we are, when we're hugging someone that we care about, right? We get this, we get this sense of wellness and okayness, which is, which counters and takes down cortisol levels in the body, right? That this is, right. this is one of the, one of the ways that we tell each other, that we remind each other in community that we are, that we're safe, that there is no threat. And so it's, it's one of those, one of those things that, that tapping into love, has a very biological basis for for helping us heal. Could you explain to me um, some of the other mechanisms that you see heart energy using in terms of creating healing? Well, if you want to think about it in terms of meridian flow, like so the the Chinese medicine acupuncture meridians are specific in where they go, and there's the heart meridian that goes from the heart to through the arm. So of course, when you think about like heart attacks and all the physical symptoms, the heart could always be addressed, of course, right? But then there's also other meridians, like one of my favorites is the meridian that goes from the heart to the uterus. So one of the things I like to, to talk to women about, especially, is that when your heart is broken, like if you have a, any kind of emotional pain, like it will definitely affect the energy going from your heart to your uterus and your pelvis. So having a broken heart, not being able to connect to others cuts you off from yourself. So that's one of the things that I always want to explain to women, that the energy of the heart, which is why it's so important to cultivate self-love, because you want all the meridians and all the energy systems in your body to flow well. Not necessarily for other people, but for yourself. Because if, they're not fi if you're not filled up it's hard to give to others. And then when you do give and you're not filled, there's always this sense of like, I'm doing too much. I'm giving too much. Like you feel this level of exhaustion because you're giving and you're not full. So you really want to work on or thinking about creating a space within you where your heart is connected to your pelvis, your heart is connected to your being. So connected in a way that you feel energetically full and you're abundant in your own self-love and energy. So when somebody's coming at you, your children, your, your husband, your partner, your girlfriends, your coworkers, you feel, you feel like you have enough to give to others because your cup is runneth over. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, let me give you this, let me give you this because I'm not so deprived. So I think that's really one of the keys is making sure that you are filled. And so I utilize the love energy by helping women create meditations and visualizations so that they can cultivate that. And also having that mindset, just shifting your mindset to do like, what do I need to do to take care of myself? What, what would be self-soothing? What would be self-loving? What would be showing myself compassion and kindness so that I could fill that for myself so that I could give to others? You, yes, you are worth caring for. I hope you know that, and I hope you're acting on it. Are you taking care of yourself in a way that you'd want someone you love to take care of themselves? 
If not, I can help you up your self-care, self-love, and self-respect game. Picture yourself making time for your joy, honoring your body, letting your heart lead for a while. How good does that feel? I would love to help you align with your heart and your power to operate from a place of grounded, centered, and abundant energy rather than stress and depletion. My coaching superpowers include smart strategy, insight, and deep compassion. I will help you embody self-respect and self-love so your light can shine brighter. I have room in my calendar for just a handful of private coaching clients in 2021. So if your heart is crying out for some support, now is the time to head to brodywelch.com forward slash about and apply. That's brodywelch.com, Brody with an I-E and Welch with a C-H. Now back to the show. important. And this is one of the central themes that we talk about here at A Healthy Curiosity is just how how this, the, the vital importance of self-care because it really, we, we ourselves deserve to enact self-love so that we do have capacity to help other people and to right. contribute, to make our contribution. And I love that you brought up that that this meridian that goes from the heart to the uterus and it's the bow my correct that right. that's it yeah that and and that and that when we think about really connecting upper and lower body connecting the heart with the lower zantian right that that which is in the pelvic region there's also a, a connection via the chong mai right that that has mm-hmm. to do with our our consciousness recognizing our essence, right? The the Shen recognizing the Jing and the connection between the two there. And something that I use clinically for when people feel like cut off from their sense of purpose in life, or they're not really yeah. sure who they are and what they're about anymore, what they were born to do. Tapping into the Chong can often help people um, sort of see that, that, that programming or wake up to their, the, to their sort of inherent destiny, not in the sense of fate, but in the sense of potential for who they could be in life. And it can just be helping people make that connection, that upper and lower body, that that what we consider that heart and uterus connection. Also, um, via the extraordinary vessel of the daimai, being able to sort of take out the garbage, <laughs> being able to remove the energetic traumas that we might be carrying around, whether that's guilt or shame or anything that we haven't been able to process. So there's just to, uh, I'm bringing this up primarily so that people can see, I think, more fullness in what Chinese medicine has to offer as far as healing on the deep programming level or he- healing like in, in a way that that transcends mere emotions like being you know feeling sad or feeling angry but really going into these these deeper kind of like the blueprint behind the patterns and um take this opportunity to just to just do a little piece of education that that's in there you mentioned meditations um, with your clients and that that's something that you help them create would you be willing to walk us through a short one here yeah absolutely wonderful uh, let's take just a couple of minutes. So if you're if you're driving, um, you might want to just not do this along with us, but save it for a time when you can safely close your eyes and tune in, if that may be part of it. And uh, yeah, we'll just spend a couple minutes connecting to our hearts uh, with Corinne's help. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're sitting in a comfortable position that could be in a chair, it could be cross-legged, however, or whatever feels good to you. And then you want to start by just taking simple, deep breaths. Just breathe into your belly. Sometimes it's useful to put your right hand on your belly and then your left hand on your heart, just to give you the mindfulness about breathing into your belly and then exhaling slowly. Take another deep breath. So, you want to think about someone that you love, something that you love, or if you want to think about divine consciousness, God, life, universe, just focus on that feeling of love.
Maybe you want to imagine that love is a candle of fire lit inside your actual physical heart. And you want to just think about the love that you have, that you're holding for whomever. And you want to imagine that light from that candle is growing. It's like in growing and growing. Breathing, growing your intention. Now you have this beautiful light inside of you. All the love that you're carrying for, let's just say the universe. And you want to imagine that light is emanating throughout your whole being. If you can visualize your chakras, that this love is going from your root, your sit, your navel, your solar plexus, to your heart, to your throat, up to your third eye, and out through your crown, that this light is emanating throughout your whole energetic being, all your auras, energy meridians, it's grounding you to the earth, connecting you to the sky, to the divine. Just breathe in all the love that's available to you from God, spirit guides, your ancestors, for all the people that love you in your life, and just pour out all the love that you have for them. Let's take a few deep breaths. There you go. You're filled with love. Oh, thank you so much. That was lovely. I um, I really enjoyed that. So, apart from feeling good, <laughs> what, <laughs> what kind of benefits does that practice have? Well, it has a lot of benefits, especially for empaths and people that are highly sensitive. So, oftentimes, I'll talk about empaths. Empaths are like energetic sponges. So for those that don't understand what empaths are, empaths are those that can feel other people's emotions. And oftentimes they embody that emotion. They feel it in their body and they either can carry that with them thinking that it's their energy, meaning not being mindful of they just picked up others' energy. So they could walk into a room and feel everyone's anxiety and then they feel anxious. And when you don't understand that you're an empath, you start to feel like you're going crazy, like you're always highly emotional, you're very sensitive. So you want to learn how to understand like what's your energy and what someone else's energy is. So when you do this love practice, and you're first of all doing a check-in of where am I emotionally, but then when you start moving love into your frequency, then in your energy field, so when you go into a space, your energy field is full. Like you're not a sponge because if you take a sponge and you put it in a bowl of water it becomes saturated and you can't really add any more water right so if you're thinking about your energy field which is a porous like all our energy fields are porous when we walk into a room everyone's energy field is always touching it's about seven feet to eight feet past us so we're always connecting energetically with others and that's how we communicate as humans it's not just a verbal and the body language, it's also an energetic imprint that we have when we meet people. And and even people who aren't highly sensitive can right. uh, probably can understand what you're talking about, right? Like we, we can walk into a room and immediately know if someone's in a bad mood or if someone right. is excited, we can feel that. And it's not just the nonverbal communication. It is literally what's like the energy they're giving off. That's even right. how, how we often describe it. Anyway, go on. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. And so... 
if you are able to start incorporating this practice of filling up your energy field with love, when you are walking in the space, being an empath or not, it's a softer, it's a softer entrance. Like people receive you differently. You receive others differently. People are less defensive because they feel more safe and accepted because love is an energy of inclusiveness. It makes people feel included. It makes people feel good. So when you are filled with love, you walk into a space, people naturally feel less defensive. They feel more safe. They feel more calm, thus creating a, a more peaceful environment. And also, if that person was angry or projecting whatever in their own energy field, love is a higher frequency that dispels that. So you're not necessarily, you'll, you'll, you'll be aware, oh, this person's upset, but you're not necessarily taking on the energy that you normally would have if you were not, if your energy field wasn't full. That is a really shrewd way of doing away with this idea that we need to, that highly sensitive people or really anyone in general needs to protect themselves from the energies of others, right? Like there's, I, yeah. I remember being in massage therapy school and being given these visualizations of like a waterfall around the, around mm -hmm. your little auric energy or, mm -hmm. or the idea of putting up mirrors to, you know, get other people's right. energy to reflect back at them or just these, these visualizations that were very much about like, you stay in your bubble, I'll stay in mine. But of course, doing healing work, we're mixing, we're, we're getting into each other's energy fields. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're merging with energy fields. Anytime we touch someone or even like working online with someone, connecting to someone's words, what, what's coming through a phone line or, or a Zoom call, we, we are connecting energetically. And the solution is not about creating separateness. The solution right. is about filling up with love so that that vibration can then uplift the person that we're working with or or connect simply if, if we're in a non-healing relationship and just a, a, a relationship of equals in that context where no one's a client and no one's a practitioner that that is uh, that it's approachable it's a, it's yeah. such a it's such a beautiful solution yeah I don't necessarily believe in boundaries and creating walls and because honestly I don't first of all I don't think they work because I'm an empath and I did this whole like training where they were like, okay, put the wall up in a rose and do all these things. So when you go in the room and I just didn't find it to be effective. Like, I mean, it kind of sort of worked, but I still felt like I was absorbing people's energy. It just didn't feel like it didn't feel as it didn't feel effective. I agree a hundred percent. Like there's, I think that, that what's useful about something like that is setting an intention of like, okay, I'm not going to take this on, but, right. but what the practice that you're describing, it's like, we're filling up with love. We're filling up with universal energy mm -hmm. and that, yeah. And that certainly I think has a much more protective effect anyway, go on. Yeah. I mean, and also the idea of creating a wall, just, I feel like initially when anybody sees a wall, uh, actual wall, it's a block, right? You don't Absolutely. You can't go around it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's the opposite of what we're trying to do. Like if you're trying to connect with people, why are you building yeah. a wall? Like that doesn't mm -hmm. really make any sense. Absolutely. And, and really me, this, anyway. Yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. It's it, and and so it, I think I think it's just a it makes a lot more sense <laughs> to me intellectually, and in a felt sense, mm -hmm. I think that's that is an excellent practice for everyone. When um when people are looking to cultivate a deeper connection to their own heart, mm -hmm. as, apart from meditation, are there things that you recommend? Apart from meditation, yeah, I would say whatever. I mean, so the 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 sound of the heart is laughter, right? So it's joy, and in Chinese medicine, so I will always tell people to do whatever brings them joy. Like finding one thing that they can do a day that's like you know takes a few minutes that brings them joy. Like if it's like dancing for five minutes, if it's going outside, if it's touching flowers, if it's smelling something, putting on a candle. Like something that really brings them joy and just incorporate that in their daily life. And it could be something that, that they do already, but then you want to just infuse that with ritual. So you want to do something daily that you really have this strong intention of like, this is going to bring me joy. So I'm going to make sure I incorporate it in my day somehow. You know, if it's like, you know, at three o'clock, this is the time that your energy goes down Maybe this is a good time to create a little ritual that brings you joy, makes you laugh, 
you know, I sometimes people watch videos on puppies and that makes them laugh and feel good. Like something like joyful and light that you can incorporate in your life. I, I think that the whole notion of prioritizing joy is radical, countercultural, and vitally important. Yeah. I mean, it, there's, I, I remember when I first started encouraging clients to prioritize what truly makes them happy instead of feeling like they have to earn it. Yeah. And it's so counter to the way that I often approach life is do the do the work first and then you can relax or as, as opposed <laughs> to to simply feeding your soul it, and right. taking that as seriously as any other health recommendation. There's no reason that it should feel indulgent or or something that to just do something that you love. It's your life, you know, and so feeling mm-hmm. like we have the right to go to our heart's desire is it, it that there's something very sick about a society that that discourages that or 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 that looks down on that as somehow um not valuable. Well, I mean it's all by design because if we're telling people not to go into their heart, not to be happy, then you're not going to connect to yourself. And then if you're not connected to yourself and you are not in touch with your true power and you're easily controllable. And you so, buy things to try right. to make you happy. Right. <laughs> instead right. Of- so Yeah. So you create this, you have a void. And if you have a void, you're always going to try to fill it. If you're trying to fill the void, then you're going to go out with the wrong type of people. You're going to have, you're going to be shopping. You're going to be doing drugs. You're going to be doing all sorts of destructive behaviors that are not going to benefit your heart or your soul or, or your spirit. And so, yeah, I don't think, I mean, the culture isn't trying to have us do that. I mean, we're pretty much doing the opposite of what society is telling us that we need to do. Yes. Yes, exactly. I'm curious how you work with people who, it, maybe it's been a long time since they've listened to their heart. Maybe they've been yeah. in survival mode or right. they've been just kind of just doing what they need to do to get through the day for too long. And mm-hmm. they they might even be dealing with something like depression or anxiety or just feeling like they don't even remember how to access joy or love is there um is there something that you could share that might help someone listening who might be in that boat well i would say that to look inside yourself to see where somebody showed you kindness And to really start to think about that, because oftentimes when people are depressed or anxious or whatever the situation is, we sometimes forget that people love us. And oftentimes if it's, you know, if it's family, we can, we have, we're very, we can be very emotional about our family members, especially if we had a, we didn't have a good childhood, but there's often somebody like a teacher, a mentor, a neighbor, Somebody in, our, somebody in your life at some point showed you a certain level of kindness, even if it was just like a moment. And I really think it's important to really start to identify the goodness that you've had in your life because we focus so much on the negative. And so to really start to go back and to think about, even in those painful moments, what was the good that happened here? What was the positive that happened here? And really start to dissect all the positivity that you've had in your life and that you currently have in your life and start to really focus on that. Because when we're in pain, we just focus on like the negative stuff that's happening and, oh, my, my dad did this, my mother did this, and my friends did that, my boyfriend broke up with me, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't necessarily look at all the positives all the time. They become, the negative just screams out loud and we focus on that. So I would say, even if it's, even if you feel like you're in the, the darkest depths of despair, there's some still a moment of light. Like if you're alive, there's, you have light in you somewhere. So you can start to dig, like look at your friends, your family, teachers. There was somebody, I promise you, that was beautiful and kind to you, even if it was just for five minutes. And then you look, you, you hold on to that memory and how you felt in that memory and think about that feeling and how you can implement that feeling in different aspects of your life. Like, how can you make that positivity grow? How can you, like, if that's your intention, like, I want to feel this way, and then life will start to support you so you can start to feel that way more often. And that will become your state of being as opposed to this negative one. 
So that's where I would say it's a good place to start is to start digging within your life, to start to see where those things have happened and all the benefits that you've had. And that's also in line with gratitude because that kind of goes into the same vibe of gratitude, like being like, oh, this happened to me. That was such a great thing. Wow, that's so great that happened. And then that that also becomes a gratitude practice in a way. I really appreciate what you're saying is that yes, like gratitude. I, I I think about the times that I've struggled to be able to connect with, with love, especially for myself. And a drop of gratitude is the gateway drug <laughs> to being able to really, to, to take down that wall. And what you're saying is also rooted in Chinese medicine. When we think about the phrase from the classics, yi dao, qi dao, shen dao, right? That this idea that the the yi uh, is the intention, the spirit that was associated with the spleen. That is, it really the the yi is our it's our intellect, it's our mind. It's it has to do with memory. It has to do with being uh, with really when we say setting an intention, we're, we're we're using the yi. It's the it's the mind. It's that which it which organizes where the thoughts are going, and that that leads the chi, the energy, and that the and that the shen, the consciousness, follows along. And so what we choose to pay attention to is what the shen is going to it, like. That's that's where we're directing this consciousness, this lens. And so being able to conjure up a memory of kindness of some of, of a time when we were included in that circle of connection of humanity, it it really does allow the Shen to to come into love. You're, it's like, you're like I get this image of of literally leading the Shen <laughs> to some place <laughs> uh, to 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 this frequency that we can tap into that we're that we're calling love. So it, that's um that sounds that sounds really right on to me. If people are interested in learning more about your work and connecting to you, where do you suggest they go? Yeah, everything's on my website. So corinnekamara.com. And I'm pretty active on social media on Instagram. And my Instagram handle is Corinne J. Kamara. And I'm on Facebook as well, Corinne Healing. And yeah, but I'm pretty much on my website. It has my events. It has my podcast. You can check out my podcast, the Infinite Love Podcast, and where we talk about a lot of what we talked about today, but specifically about people's stories and how they use love to overcome their, li- their life's challenges and then how they help people through that and help, you know, how they begin to learn how to serve. I was so excited to talk to you for your podcast and yeah. uh, I would love to to dive into that deeper. Um, such a such a worthy topic that the world needs right now. And we'll definitely have links to everything you mentioned in the show notes over at brodywelch.com or wherever people are getting their podcasts. Corinne Kamara, thank you again so much for being the force of love that you are in the world and being willing to share your wisdom here today. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. Thanks for listening today. To check out the show notes, get on my email list or drop me a line. Head to brodywelch.com. That's Brody with an IE and Welch with a CH. I'd love to hear from you. If you learned something new or feel inspired to try something different in your life, I'd love for you to pay it forward by sharing this episode with a friend who you think could also benefit and give them a reason to listen. You'll be helping to create a world where we encourage each other to embody self-respect. Till next time, be good to yourself.